Hi guys! Today in this video we will be learning how to name inorganic compounds. Inorganic compounds are ionic and covalent compounds. So we will be learning how to name ionic compounds and covalent compounds one by one. Let's talk about ionic compounds first. You see there is a word univalent. So we need to understand what is a univalent ionic compound. As we know, ionic compounds are formed when a metal and a non-metal react. How does a metal and a non-metal react? Is metal is going to lose electrons to a non-metal. So in this case, when metal loses electrons, metal becomes positively charged, also called a cation. Cation means positive charge. Ion, non-metals are going to gain electrons and become anions. An anions are negative charged ions. Now let's understand what is a univalent. What do you mean by univalent? For understanding univalent ions, we have to go and check the periodic table. So let's say if we have, this is our periodic table. We see on the periodic table, there are elements that have only one charge displayed. You see all of this first group. Hydrogen has two charges displayed, but everything else is only one charge displayed. Similarly, second group has only one charge displayed. Similarly, when we go to this blue side, we see always one charge displayed. So all the elements that have only one charge, they are called univalent. One charge means univalent. The ones that become negatively charged, so these negative charges are all the non-metals. Positive charges are all metals. Let's see the ones that have more than one charge. So we see here, this titanium has two charges. All of these have two charges, two charges. Similarly here, tin has two charges, lead has two charges. So anything that has more than one charge means it's a multivalent. We would always see that the multivalency or more than one charge property exists only on metals. Only the positive ones are multivalent. The negative ones are always univalent. So as now you understand the meaning of univalent and multivalent, let's apply this on naming ionic compounds. Let's say you're given NaCl. Na is a positively charged ion. So Na is one positive and Cl when we go here is one negative. So we see this is univalent. So how do we name univalent ionic compounds? You just name the metal name as is. So sodium is Na. Non-metal name ends with a IDE. So this is the ending of a non-metal. So the name is sodium chloride. And how is this NaCl being formed? Is Na has one positive charge. Cl has one negative charge. Positive and negative means that they are going to combine together in order to form a compound. All we have to do is just crisscross these numbers. So this one goes and becomes the subscript of fluorine. This becomes the subscript of Na. So it becomes Na1Cl1. If the subscript is 1, we do not even have to put it. So it becomes NaCl. And the name is sodium chloride. Let's take another example. Let's say we have potassium and oxygen. I want to turn this into a compound and then I want to name this. I go back to the periodic table and I see potassium is one positive and oxygen is two negative. All I have to do is just put the charges here. Potassium is one positive, oxygen is two negative. Positive and negative means that they are going to combine together. Numbers are going to be crisscrossed. So this one comes down becomes the subscript of O, two comes down becomes the subscript of potassium. So this looks like K2O. How do we name it? Metal name stays as is, so it would be potassium. Non-metal name ends with an ide, so it is oxide. Let's take another example of a univalent ionic compound just for the sake of practice. Let's say we have magnesium and nitrogen. Because magnesium is a metal, nitrogen is a non-metal, we know this is going to be an ionic compound. So let's form the compound first. In order to form the compound, we go back and check on the periodic table their charges. And here we see that magnesium has two positive charge, nitrogen has three negative charge. We'll use these charges. So magnesium has two positive charge, nitrogen has three negative charge. Positive and negative just means that they're going to form compound. 2 and 3 is going to be crisscrossed. That will give us Mg3 
N2. What is the name? It's magnesium nitride. Next, we have to name multivalent ionic compounds. Let's locate our multivalent ionic compounds on periodic table. So we see only the metals are multivalent, non-metals are not multivalent. Let's take an example. Let's say the question wants you to form a compound between iron and oxygen. How do we form this compound? We need their charges. So we'll go back and check on the periodic table their charges. We see here that iron has two charges, three positive and two positive. But for oxygen, we just have one charge. So iron has a three positive, oxygen has a two negative. Another case, iron has a 2 positive, oxygen has a 2 negative. Now, if the question wants you to form a compound between iron and oxygen, the question has to specify which iron. You see, this specification was not required in univalent because there was only one answer to it. But in this particular case, if you're given an element in order to form a compound, they would also mention if the element is a multivalent element, the question has to mention like this, which charge are you going to use? If this number is like this, the numbers that we put here is in Roman numerals. If the number is this, that means it's a two. So we would use in this case, iron with two positive, oxygen with two negative. Positive and negative only means that we have to form a compound between iron and oxygen. So they're gonna attract to each other because they have opposite charges. These numbers are going to be the ones that are going to crisscross. Iron 2, O2. Whenever there are similar numbers, you can reduce them down to the lowest terms. So iron oxide is what we get. Now when we have to name it, I have to mention what iron was used in order to form this compound. And the iron that was used was number 2 charge iron. So we're just going to place this number 2 as a Roman numeral. So iron 2 oxide. This is how multivalent naming is different from univalent naming. The only thing that we have to make sure that in multivalent naming is there is this number added in order to make sure that the person who's reading it get to know what charge was used in order to form that compound. Let's take the second example of iron. Now if we have iron 3 positive and O2 negative, and we crisscross, we would get Fe2O3. You see, the molecular formula is totally different from when the iron was taken to be 2 positive. In this case, the name is going to be iron, and in bracket, we will not put this number because this is the number that we have obtained by crisscrossing. We would put the charge for iron that was used. So the iron charge is 3, and then here goes oxide. So remember, in this bracket goes the charge of metal that is used to form the compound. And in this case, iron, three positive was used. So that's why you put iron. Let's take another example. Let's form a compound between SN2 and chlorine. Now, SN2 means SN is given to you as two positive. When we check back on the periodic table, chlorine is going to be one negative. Now we crisscross. This gives us SnCl2. So how do we name it? Sn is nothing but tin. Here goes the number, and that is number two. And the name of non-metal is going to end as an IDE. Let's practice two, three more examples. So if we are asked to name this, now we would go back and check on the periodic table what is Pb. Cl we know is chlorine. Here when we check Pb, we see Pb has two charges. So Pb has a 2 positive. Also Pb has a 4 positive. And Cl is just one charge, one negative. We would use this information here. So we have Pb is 2 positive and Pb is a lead. Also we have Pb as, also we have Pb as 4 positive. Now if we form this Pb 2 positive compound with a chlorine, after crisscrossing, we will be able to get PbCl2. If we use Pb4 positive with a chlorine, we would be able to get PbCl4. Out of these two, the question for us is for PbCl2. And we see that PbCl2 is formed from that lead that has a charge of 2 positive. So when we have to name it, all we have to do is just write on lead. In the bracket that the charge was used is to chloride. 
Let's do another example for the sake of practice. We have CO3N2. We'll go back and check what does this CO stands for and what does this N stand for. We notice that CO is cobalt and there are two charges for cobalt, two positive and three positive. N has one charge that is three negative and we would use this information. So cobalt has two positive charge, N has three negative charge. If we crisscross this, we would be able to get CO3N2. If we use cobalt with three positive charge and we crisscross this, we would be able to get CO3N3. We cross out common factors and we get CON. Now the question asks us to name this, which is same as this. And this particular CO3N2 comes from when cobalt 2 positive is used. So how do we name this? All we have to do is just say cobalt in the bracket. Please don't put number 3. We have to put the charge that helped us form this compound. And the charge is 2. The name of nitrogen becomes nitride because it is a non-metal.